This video is brought to you by Audible. What's going on guys? This is RBG hitting you with more news on Marvel's Avengers, the game that keeps on giving, whether it be positive to negative or downright mixed emotions. It's been quite a weird time for this title. It seems like no matter what news we get on it, it's not enough to fully pull us in, and I think it's because the information has been rolled out slowly, not to mention that when we do get it, the developers don't really go in depth. There are still some things we have questions about, like the newly announced Hero Mode, which is the main campaign, and the Warzone missions that are supposedly going to tie into each other. The game's developers are being very careful when it comes to what they reveal about it and when. And where they choose to reveal those things has become more of a behind closed doors event. Over the course of the past few months, two pretty big things have been revealed. Firstly, upon launch, the game will have six playable characters, those characters being Miss Marvel, Hulk, Black Widow, Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America. And this is a given since each Avengers member has their own spotlight trailer. The only thing we weren't really sure about was Captain America because he's supposedly bitten the bullet after being caught in an explosion. My theory is that he'll be playable briefly in the beginning depending on how many missions take place before the big A-Day event, and he'll eventually return because we already know that they're not just gonna completely kill him off. Cap has become too iconic of a character and I doubt they go through the troubles of developing gameplay for him just to axe him off for the remainder of the campaign. But then again, if we can play with him freely through the multiplayer Warzone missions, he just may be asking for the rest of the main story. But who knows? As I said, Crystal Dynamics has been very tight-lipped about these details and they haven't given us enough to go off of. We still have 5 months until Marvel's Avengers releases, but that hasn't necessarily stopped the marketing campaign from going strong. Marvel has been very active in regards to this title on different social media outlets, and while we know little to nothing about the game's mechanics and general premise, we at least have little tidbits to go off of, like the upcoming prequel comics. These are going to be our primary source on getting certain info regarding the overall direction the story will take. As a matter of fact, it didn't take very long to answer one question, and that's in regards to how the Taskmaster's henchmen were able to obtain Stark Tech. Because if you remember during the big A-Day battle, Tony realized that they were using his proprietary poster technology. This is something that not only confused the Avengers, but it also ultimately got the heroes outlawed in San Francisco, because it was their technology causing all the damage. Not to mention that their helicarrier exploded, causing Terrigen radiation to have the city. But anyways, the first issue to come out of the comic book tie-ins is Marvel's Avengers Iron Man. It's written by Jim Zub and illustrated by Paco Diaz. Jim mentions in an interview that the relationship between the Avengers, S.H.I.E.L.D. and the public at large is not a simple one in the Marvel's Avengers game. And this story helps set up some of those dynamics and teases tension to come as Tony tries to figure out who he can trust and deal with the Lethal Legion at the same time. For those who aren't familiar with them, the Lethal Legion is basically a criminal alliance dedicated to power, profit, and the destruction of the Avengers. Throughout the years, there have been many versions of the group, each consisting of different members. Now, something to note about this particular version of the group is that it seems to be a mixture of original members, three of them being the Beetle, Absorbing Man, and Whirlwind, but there was one member that confused me, and that's Titania because she's never really been associated with the Lethal Legion. But it's pretty dope that they even thought of including her considering the fact that she's one of those under the radar characters. Anyways, the Avengers are having a little bit of trouble fighting off the group of supervillains and that iconic team synergy we're so accustomed to seems to be off, especially with Iron Man. For some strange reason, he can't land a good shot on a C-lister villain such as the Beetle with his bleeding edge tech. He wonders if he's been having an off day, but as the fight progresses, he realizes his suit's been compromised. Eventually, the Avengers emerge triumphant, and Tony Stark's worst assumptions are validated even further after he scans the Beetle's armor. The tech was a direct match of that of his own. One of his main culprits who will be the cause of the leak is S.H.I.E.L.D. He even wonders if his fellow members of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Hulk and Black Widow, sold him out. Later, he pays the Beetle a visit in his holding chambers and tries to get answers on who gave him the data. Beetle keeps a tight lip on this particular information, but teases Tony, hinting that more villains are going to become invincible when Iron Man tries to oppose them. Leaving with no answers, he decides to go talk with some of his fellow Avengers to see if they were responsible for the leak. The first interrogation went in the form of an epic sparring match between him and the Black Widow, who jested that Tony's track record of building deadly weapons made him a lot of enemies so it only made sense that someone would ultimately get a hold of his tech. But Tony insists that he's checked his security networks from top to bottom. And the Black Widow basically deduces that Tony is just as sloppy with his own weapons as he is when it comes to combat. After leaving with a bruised ego, he meets up with Bruce Banner. And straight up, he asks Bruce if he ate his shield and compromises his security networks for surveillance purposes. But Bruce tells him no. So later, Tony tries doing a little espionage at Shield's lab. 
As he sneaks around, Stark realizes that his data is being stolen by the covert organization, but there's one other problem. That same data that S.H.I.E.L.D. was taken from Stark was being taken by Spymaster, a master of disguise who usually sells to the black market. According to Nick Fury, he's the only person who got the data, but the now enraged Tony Stark knows the one thing he didn't want to come to fruition is actually becoming a reality. His tech is being leaked to all of his enemies. Now, one thing I noticed about this part is how there are glaring similarities between this story's tone and that of the MCU's Avengers tone. Like, the back and forth banter between Tony and Nick instantly made me think of how they'd interact with each other in the Avengers movies. Two individuals who have a common goal of keeping the people of Earth safe, but they barely trust one another. They have different ideologies on what they should do, and while they may occasionally come to an agreement and win big battles, they'll eventually butt heads and that's what we see them doing in this story. And you can just tell that this big leak is going to have some dire repercussions behind it, because enemies like Taskmaster will be powered up like never before thanks to this access to Stark's information, as well as portions of his money. If this major leak is any indication of more villains coming at the Avengers, we could see Tony's weapon and armories popping up all over the globe, stretching the Avengers thin. And the ironic thing is while S.H.I.E.L.D. stole the data for the greater good, they may have doomed the planet with their sinister actions. What makes this case even worse is Iron Man won't know who to trust anymore as it was the very organization he chose to work with to safeguard the world who backstabbed him in the first place and inadvertently let the data slip into the wrong hands. And it already looks like that's the case because you see him becoming a bit of a recluse in all of the Marvel's Avengers trailers. And this leak could ultimately make his teammates come against him for his recklessness. We've seen time and time again through various comics and movies where Tony's tech always ends up in the wrong hands. It's become a major part of his story arc in the MCU where villains like Obadiah Stane, Whiplash, and even a crazy AI in the form of Ultron wreak chaos because of him. Once his secrets are out of his hands, it usually signals the apocalypse. But anyways guys, this was an excellent read that satiated my appetite for more information on Marvel's Avengers. Not only that, it made me want to read more about Iron Man. One book that highlights some of his awesome characteristics and feats is Iron Man Operation AIM. This story felt very synonymous with what's to come with Iron Man in the upcoming Avengers game. It features the corrupt scientist group known as AIM who created the ultimate mental organism, MODOK. Hearing that MODOK has devised a plan to create an ultimate weapon of revenge, Iron Man recruits the likes of War Machine, Captain America, and Black Panther to stop the evil genius. I can't recommend this book enough and the best way to experience it is through Audible, where you can get one free audio book and two exclusive Audible originals you can't hear anywhere else. But that's just one of many options. If you happen to be into other things besides comics, like physical fitness, being financially successful, or overall self-improvement, you'll find that Audible has a pretty solid library that'll accommodate all of your needs. I'm still finding awesome things to listen to and I sometimes take notes because as you all know, I do voice work and narrations. So if you want to read good stories like Iron Man Operation AIM or any other audiobooks, go to audible.com slash rbg or you can text rbg to 500 500 to try it for free for 30 days. But as always guys, I'd appreciate it if you like or dislike this video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with all your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. Just want to wish all of you a happy new years and thank you for sticking with me. But this is your boy RBG signing out on my last video for 2019. I'll see you guys in 2020. Peace out.